Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. Um, today I'm going to be talking all about fillers with you guys. You seem to enjoy my talks on Botox and lasers, so uh, you asked me to talk about fillers, so that's what I'm going to do today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a dermatologist. I have a YouTube channel here wherein I um, upload fun vlogs of my life, plant-based recipes, and a lot of skincare Q&As and skincare-focused content. So if that type of thing is of interest to you, I encourage you to subscribe for all of the fun. So injectable fillers, what do they do? Dermal fillers um, are kind of cool in that they function to plump up the skin um, in, in the deeper layers of the skin. They're injected into the dermis, the layer deep down inside of our skin, and in doing so, they fill up space that has been lost as a result of age-related changes and, and, and atrophy in the skin. As we get wiser, as time goes on, our um, facial structure starts to lose some of the um, deeper supportive framework, and that can lead to um, wrinkles that appear at rest, saggy skin. It can kind of shift the shape of our face a little bit, um, make the eyes appear a little bit more hollow, the cheeks um, a little flatter, and the neck less well-defined than it was in our younger years. So people seeking um, kind of an uh, aesthetic uh, rejuvenation to get themselves back to the way they looked maybe you know, five, ten years ago. Uh, fillers can really, really do um, some interesting things to, to get you to that, that point. Um, additionally, fillers, because they um, are put into the deeper layer of the skin, they can also be helpful and useful for acne scars, um, certain types of acne scars, like um, the little ice pick acne scars that are just a single like hole in the skin. Dermal filler can be injected to occupy that, that space um, where the tissue has been damaged by the old acne, plump it up, and really, really, really lessen the appearance of the scar quite a bit. So they're very helpful in that regard. Additionally, when the filler is placed um, expertly in, in certain locations, because it can fill up that space, it can, you know, kind of shift um, are the shape of our face subtly and kind of almost, it's almost like a, a little facelift, if you will. It can, you know, kind of lift up the nose a little bit just by virtue of where the filler is placed. It can, you know, plump up the lips a little bit and just kind of alter the overall appearance and symmetry of the face and the aesthetics of the face. So, you know, fillers can, can be quite helpful in terms of facial rejuvenation and cosmetic concerns. Something people don't often appreciate is that fillers um, actually can have a long-lasting um, beneficial outcome in the deeper layers of the skin. While they degrade slowly over time and are not technically permanent, fillers have been demonstrated um, to um, help the body start to boost some of its own collagen production. They're deeper in the skin and some of that framework that has gone <laughs> missing uh, can start to rebuild itself as a result of the, the filler stimulates that. Sorry, there's a loud banging outside my window. While the, while the filler, <laughs> While the filler starts to wear off, the body um, can begin to make a little bit of its own collagen again, and it can really strengthen those deeper layers of the skin. So, so for somebody dealing with an acne scar, for example, long after the filler has worn off, sometimes the scar can still uh, appear quite a bit improved as a result of the body's natural response to the filler. Fillers fall into four different categories. There are synthetic fillers. Um, collagen fillers, hyaluronic acid fillers, and then autologous are, are self fillers, okay? So that would be like your own fat harvested. Synthetic um, fillers, I'll talk about first, they're derived from either silicone, calcium hydroxyapatite, poly L lactic acid, or polymethyl methacrylate. And synthetic fillers are either, can actually be permanent or semi-permanent. They're a lot thicker than, um, than other um, fillers like your hyaluronic acid filler, for example. They're a lot denser. And synthetic fillers, as I said, can be permanent or semi-permanent. Silicon and one called Artifil are permanent fillers. Silicon is rarely, rarely used anymore. 
And then um, Radiesse, which is calcium hydroxyapatite, that is a semi-permanent synthetic filler that can last quite a while, nine months um, to up to two years, so quite a while. And Sculpture, which is um, a lot more watery and viscous, it's semi-permanent, um, but it can last up to two years. The thing about Sculpture, though, is that it kind of has to build on itself, so it requires multiple injections. Then your collagen fillers, these um, are derived from either bovine or pig sources, rarely used anymore. Um, and then there are human and human synthetic collagens, and the human synthetic collagens are derived in the lab from a human fibroblast, so no animals involved. Collagen fillers, however, are very temporary. They're only like one to three months, so not very long lasting. And probably what you're most familiar with and what you've heard the most about are hyaluronic acid fillers. These include things like Juvederm, Restylane, Perlane, Juvederm Ultra. And hyaluronic acid fillers can last anywhere from six months to two years. It kind of depends on the individual. And then lastly, I mentioned autologous fillers or self fillers. That involves harvesting fat from um, other locations of the body and depositing it un under the skin of the face. <laughs> so that has the potential to be permanent, but in many people it kind of loses efficacy over time. I get a lot of questions on here on what type of filler is best for X, Y, and Z. And the filler selected is um, up to the, uh, you know, kind of up to the expertise of the treating physician um, by virtue of the anatomy of your face, your facial structure, your overall cosmetic concern. Um, what best filler is going to meet that, that need. And um, every, every practitioner has a different kind of opinion and Ultimately, I would just put my trust in the treating physician uh, based on your um, cosmetic consultation with them and their ability to advise you um, rather than just believing that one type of filler is the one that you want. Go in there with an open mind. And more than one type of filler uh, may be um, recommended to get you to the aesthetic results that you're looking for. But filler injections really help with like some of the deeper lines um, around our nose, between our nose and our mouth, the nasolabial folds they're called. They can ha help quite a bit with um, per forehead wrinkles that are present at rest, not with motion. So if you remember back to my Botox talk, <laughs> Botox talk, I discussed how Botox is really only going to be helpful for wrinkles that appear with motion. So if you, uh, you know, make your face completely relaxed and you can see wrinkles, that's really where filler can be helpful. And a variety of different fillers can be selected for, for those wrinkles that appear at rest. Also very helpful for um, the flattening of the cheeks that occurs with aging, helpful for some rejuvenation around the neck, helpful for obviously plumping up the lips. Um, it can kind of almost give a, um, a rhinoplasty or, or a nose job, uh, depending on where it's injected around the nose, okay? It can plump up the nose and lift the nose. Um, so it can really rejuvenate the um, aesthetics of, of the nose and the structure of the nose quite a bit. Could be injected into the ears. I mean, really, just about anywhere uh, you can you can find somebody uh, who has expertise and has experimented with injecting filler there. <laughs> And filler can also be injected under the eyes. So I have that video um, from a while back about dark circles under the eyes. I mentioned that filler was an aesthetic treatment that could be pursued uh, once a medical cause for the um, dark circles had been ruled out. Um, filler can help quite a bit um, and kind of rejuvenate the hollows around the eyes and, uh, and um, improve that. And filler, in addition to in addition to the hollows under the eyes and the dark circles, fillers can also help smooth out some crow's feet that are present at rest. Um, whereas Botox is helpful for crow's, crow's feet that start to appear, uh, you know, with movement. Um, once they're there, once they're fixed there, then filler is, is something that would be useful. There is a um, Side effect, you know, unfortunately, people with um, on HIV medications can develop a terrible side effect. Um, it's called lipoatrophy, um, in which the medication actually causes the fatty layers uh, in the skin to to quickly atrophy and can really um, result in kind of some uh, very quick onset 
uh, dis disfiguring changes to the face that can really, really impact an individual's self-esteem. Sculpture is actually FDA approved for HIV associated lipoatrophy uh, related to that. So, you know, if that's you, um, chances are, you know, your insurance might even cover that because that is a consequence of the medication. And it really, really can wreak havoc on an individual's self-esteem. They're trying to go through treatment and get themselves healthy. And uh, they have this devastating side effect of the medication. So that can certainly help. We also have some good evidence that fillers are safe in um, darker skin types. You know, a lot of the cosmetic procedures have a risk of, because they're creating a wound and creating uh, kind of trauma in the skin, darker skin types can heal with um, disfiguring post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And that's been shown to not be a risk with fillers in, in darker skin types. And it's been shown to be that fillers are, are very well tolerated. So it's safe in that, it's good in that regard. The actual procedure itself, um, you know, you, you want to um, factor in the amount of time that it takes to put on a little numbing cream um, to, because it can be painful. The, the injections are, are somewhat painful, so a numbing cream is, is usually put on. Um, so you want to factor that in. It usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes of that. But, you know, it kind of the overall amount of time that it takes for the fillers to be injected, it's kind of up to um, how, how extensive in an area that's being treated. And, you know, the individual really likes to take their time um, and kind of go slowly. So uh, just to make sure that they're going conservatively and getting you the best outcome. And, you know, it's m many, many people's practice, I would say, the overwhelming majority of people's practice, to start on the more conservative side as to how much they inject. Because you can always come back, right, and have a little bit more put in, but it's harder to undo what has already been done. So they, they always want to err on the side of not having you walk out of there um, and a few days later develop that overfill look. So. Um, you know, you have to real how much do fillers cost? Well, for the doctor, they're actually quite expensive to buy, so the procedure is going to cost you quite a bit. It's cosmetic. Aside from, aside from the uh, HIV associated lipoatrophy that I mentioned, it, it's pretty much a cosmetic procedure that you're going to have to pay for out of pocket. So it can cost some pretty big bucks. It's like I said, the actual injections themselves can be pretty uncomfortable and painful. The numbing medicine and the numbing creams can help a lot. Um, some of the um, fillers have a little bit of numbing medicine within them, so that can help as well. Probably one of the most so common side effects and what you should expect um, is some degree of bruising and puffiness and swelling. That usually subsides within a few days. Um, but there are risks associated with getting fillers, um, namely, you know, it's creating a, a puncture and a wound and going into the deeper layer of the skin. So sterile technique is imperative. A good uh, technique is imperative on the part of the on the part of the person performing it. Um, there is a risk of infection. Um, there is a risk of you know contamination if it's not done properly of the actual material. Um, and uh, you know those inert spheres that are being injected in the filler, they can uh, bio uh, bacterial biofilms can actually form on them uh, and create kind of pretty nasty infections. So it's really, really imperative that you go to somebody who um, is well trained. I recommend always a board certified uh, dermatologist or plastic surgeon um, who has, you know, can at least demonstrate a track record of having done many of these procedures uh, to get you the safest outcome, okay? Safety, remember, your safety is, is important, particularly when you're paying for something that, you know, uh, isn't medically life-saving, you know, don't put, your, don't put yourself under unnecessary harm. The other really um, scary potential complication that can occur from fillers, um, it's very rare, you know, um, but physicians um, are well trained on when to recognize that it's occurring, how to intervene on it very quickly to stop it from, um, from occurring or worsening, is um, if the filler is inadvertently injected into um, one, of the, one of the arteries in the face, some of the blood supply in the face, basically creates like a heart attack in your face and the area of the skin that is perfused by that blood vessel that uh, was inadvertently injected uh, can die off and necrose and turn black, okay? And that is really bad. 
Not only that, but sh God f forbid, you know, a risk of injecting around the eyes um, is that you could, it could inadvertently be injected into the, some of the arterial supply uh, that feeds back into the eye and you could go blind, okay? I mean, I don't wanna scare you. These are rare, rare complications, but it's all the more reason to do your homework and make sure that you're going to somebody who knows what they're doing, okay? Then one of the other potential risks of filler, namely the hyaluronic acid filler, if the person doesn't know what they're doing and they inject too superficially, so they don't go deep enough down into, the, they don't actually get into the dermis, they go too superficially, it can create these little bluish nodules uh, because the, the filler is in the wrong place basically and that can be rather disfiguring. Additionally, your body may just decide, I don't want this stuff in me and start to reject it. That's called a foreign body uh, reaction. It, it can happen. It can happen. Um, it's pretty rare. And um, there, if you have a hyaluronic acid-based filler, there's something called hyaluronidase that, um, you know, should it, either a, a complication occur or uh, it not be put in the right place, a little bit of this enzyme hyaluronidase can, can be injected into the area and dissolve the filler. Um, there are three fillers that you need to have repeated. Um, that would be Sculptra. You usually need three to five it, because it's the one that kind of has to build on itself. Then if you're having your own, own fat harvested and injected into the skin, that typically takes about five uh, in, injections before, before you can expect for it to start working. And then silicone, which is rarely used anymore, if at all, that requires multiple um, treatments because little micro droplets are injected. And sometimes the, the uh, injector has to, um, to perform additional ones to kind of get them to take and to build on themselves. And then when do you see results? You usually see results immediately. Do bear in mind, however, that shortly after the procedure, you uh, will kind of appear um, really, really puffy and over, over, <laughs> overfilled and it might alarm you, okay? Particularly, I think people are most shocked when they get filler around their lips. Like a few days later, their lips really, really puff up. That's because of both local tissue swelling as well as just kind of expansion of the filler. Um, but that dies down and it's not, it's not really the actual outcome of the, the filler. So um, be prepared for that. Factor it into your downtime um, that you're going you're gonna to have a little bit of an explosive plumpness initially and then get back to a more natural, natural looking fill. Um, and as I said, you know, it's the practice of most to start conservative with the volume that is injected because you can always have more put in later, but it becomes harder to reverse too much that's been put in. And, you know, up to two years, <laughs> six months, two years, that's a long time to wait. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It covered all of your questions about fillers. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. <laughs>